right. Hello, everybody. Another episode of Keto Rocks is before us, and we want to thank you for joining us. Tonight, we got a special guest. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself and my co-host. My name is Jim Hobbs, and to my right or left, however he shows up on your screen, is Mr. Brian Damage Forsythe, the guitar player from Kicks. So, welcome. And now, we have a special guest. It's going to be very interesting tonight, so... Uh, Grab a piece of meat, sit back, and get ready to enjoy yourself because uh, we have the bass player from Kicks, Mark Shanker, with us this evening. So, Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, so it's going to be really interesting to find out, you know, what you guys do before the show, what meals do you have together, who do you eat with, and then who do you poke fun at that's not eating the way you guys eat. So, anyway, Mark, I'll kind of just let you get started, share a little bit about uh, what made you go keto, a carnivore, or did Brian twist your arm over and over again until you finally said, I give, I give, I'll do it, I'll do it. So what's the story? I, I think that, um, you know, it goes back a couple of years. Um, I, I think that um, what I remember is that, that Brian had been dabbling in keto first, and and he had always been a pescatarian. So whenever we went out to, to dinner, because for whatever reason, our schedules are the same when we're on the road, when we're traveling, and we always end up eating together, and nobody else is ever ready to eat when we're ready to eat, so it's usually just Brian and I, and so um, so we would spend time, you know, talking about, you know, different theories about, and I think the first thing that we were focused on was like cutting out sugar, like getting rid of, you know, I, I forget if Brian had read Gary Taub's book, um, uh, what's it called, The Case Against Sugar, I guess. But I had read that book and I was like, ooh, man, this sugar thing is like a lot worse than I thought, <laughs> you know? So, so it was like, instead of eating, you know, candy bars after the gig, it was eat nothing after the gig, you know? And, you know, Brian and I, I, th I think I speak for Brian accurately. I could say we both kind of have a sweet tooth. And so, yeah. you know, we would fight over the chocolate chip or the uh, oatmeal raisin cookies at the gig, <laughs> you know, who could get more in his bag before the other guy comes up. Yeah. And so... <laughs> And so we were, um, and then I think Brian started uh, looking at. What, so what you guys to become a team and grab all of them and they sold them back to Jimmy and Steve and uh, Ronnie? Those guys would, they would go for the pizza and, um, and they, they would, uh, what, whatever else we had in there. We had, you know, whatever else cater, usually it's a, um, it's a catered uh, deli tray. So, you know, so I would just eat like rolls of chicken off that. And, le and let me say before, I started trying to do carnivore recently. I hadn't actually eat red meat since 1994. Wow. So I had only been a chicken and poultry eater before that. And the reason for that was, is I got real sick on the road um, three times in one summer with food poisoning from um, the last one was a chicken fried steak sandwich from Hardee's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I will never forget it. And it was after playing the, um, what was the name of that club down there, Brian, in Fayetteville? The, um, oh, the Flaming Mug. The Flaming Mug. Right. It was right after playing the Flaming Mug and we were headed home. And that was, I got so sick from that. I, that was when I decided I wasn't going to eat red meat anymore, mostly because it grossed me out because I got so sick. So, you know, fast forward a bazillion years later, um, you know, I see, I see, you know, Brian starts talking about um, you know, he was going to try carnivore. And I was like, really, you haven't even eaten, eaten beef. Are you going to do that? And um, he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do it because keto makes me feel pretty good. And I was doing it, the, not hardcore keto, but the best keto I could with the limited things that I knew and the resources that I had. And right. so I was doing, um, you, you know, keto and then I would go off of it because I would get some malted milk balls or something. I don't know. And uh um, so I was doing the best I could with the limited resources I had. And, um, and then I started to feel uh, differently. But, but it, it, right before that, I started doing intermittent fasting because I had read a bunch of articles and listened to people like Dr. Rhonda Patrick. And um, they said that, uh, that you get a cognitive benefit, which always piques my interest, you know, like, hey, something's going to make me you know, think better or whatever, or make me feel better mentally. I'm all about that. So, um, so I tried, so I, I was doing intermittent fasting first and I was very successful with it. And I had lost some weight and I felt, um, I never felt hungry until like two or three in the afternoon. 
And um, uh, it was just really, you know, shortening that feeding window to eight hours really made a huge difference for me. And, um, uh, and then I think about that time I was dabbling in keto and Brian started saying that he was going to go carnivore. And, and the, the, the funny story that I like to tell is that, you know, Brian and I have been sitting across from each other for 10 years eating food almost every time we travel. And I had never seen him take a bite of actual meat, right? It's always fish or, or not even chicken. It was just always fish. And, um, and so when he decided to, I think when I, well, at least when I saw he decided to make that leap, we were playing a place called Northwoods Rock Rally in Minnesota. Oh. And, and he was like, I'm doing it today. And I was like, Brian, we are so far away from, like, what if you get, you know, your stomach gets upset because you hear people switching over to carnivore and they have, you know, they have the runs for a period they, of time. They, they have issues. I'm like, yeah. we're traveling, you know, can't you do this at home where it's, you know, you probably spend a little less time on the thunder bucket. I don't know, you know right. what? And so, um, so I remember that the, the gig was so weird. It was out in this gigantic cow pasture in Northern Minnesota. And there was a concrete stage with an overhang and, um, somebody was given helicopter rides and they were like buzzing the crowd and everybody had fireworks. And it was just this crazy, crazy gig with all these crazy Northwoods people. Right. And so, and th then the next crazy thing that happens is Brian and I go to eat and he picks up like up there, they have kielbasa, you know, it's a big thing up there. And, and right. so he picks up one of those and I think a couple of burger patties and maybe some, did you get some pork that day, Brian? Do you remember that at all? Yeah, I remember that it was slim pickings. They didn't have any pickings for sure. Yeah, it was, it wasn't like great choices. <laughs> but I, I remember, think, I think they had a, some beef hot dogs I might have grabbed. There you go. That, that's probably what it was. But, but, but I do remember that moment when he took the bite into that beef and I hadn't seen him do that before. And for me, I've sat across from him a thousand times. It was so weird that I just, I was like, man, you don't know how bizarre this is to me. <laughs> so, um, but you know, he went straight in, man. He had, uh, you know, he ate a lot of, you know, two burgers, kielbasa, hot dog, whatever. He ate a whole bunch of meat that day. And, um, and I started going, okay, we'll see how he feels tomorrow when we get to the airport, you know? <laughs> and as it turns out, you know, for, uh, for, for him and I both, I don't think we suffered any intestinal problems. When I switched over and started doing carnivore, or actually my big worry was the first time I ate red meat in since 1994, whatever that math is, that, um, that I would just have severe stomach cramps or diarrhea or some kind of negative reaction. And so the first thing I ate is when I got my new Traeger grill, um, I cooked a uh, filet mignon on it because I figured, well, might as well go for the best, you know. So I cooked it Absolutely. the best way I knew how, and I ate it, and I had no, um, no problems whatsoever. And I ate uh, meat every day for the rest of that week. And um, sometimes I would have eggs, fried eggs on a burger with no bun. And I started to feel different in about 10 days. And I, I, I got to say that it was, you know, it's, a, it's so weird because it's such a relief not to really be sitting there all day and thinking about your next meal, you know, right. like I'm not hungry, you know, yeah. like I haven't eaten right now. It's eight o'clock here, East coast. And, um, I haven't eaten since yesterday and I'm, I really haven't thought about food yet today. And so it's kind of, that's one of the more bizarre side effects because you're so used to being hungry. You know, it's like, when am I going to get my next meal? Oh, I'll just have a biscuit. I'll just have, you know, a handful of chips or throw back some cashews or, you know, something to tide you over until that next meal. And I thought that that was one of the more, and Brian had told me that that would, would happen, that you would get less hungry. And I experienced that a little bit on keto um, and, and, and particularly with intermittent fasting. And so, um, so I was just waiting for, you know, all these negative, terrible things to happen. You know, can I, can I really walk by the pantry without grabbing a Snickers bar? You know what I mean? So now, um, now, now, can, I, can I ask you something? Because sure, yeah. that, people are hearing this, people who have not gone keto or carnivore yet are hearing this and, and, and it's born to them. They cannot believe that they could go without food for that long of a period. 
But once you get off, and this is the key thing that I want everybody to understand, once you get off that sugar roller coaster, oh yeah, because the sugar is what's driving you. Like as soon as your body's done, it's like, okay, where are we going to get next? It's constantly on that roller coaster to keep it at that high, mm -hmm. and 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 when you don't feed it, it's it starts to start to uh, retaliate against you. Right. But when you don't have, when you've got off the sugar, it's mm -hmm. amazing how your brain's able to focus on other things and how you're not focused on, like you said, Mark, what, what am I, I going to eat next? Mm -hmm. And so that, that had to, to be a welcome relief. You started probably pursuing other things or being able to get, become, what's the word, more effective in living life as opposed to living for food moment right. by moment. Right. And, you know, Gary Tobbs' book had a, a huge effect on me. I had no idea that, you know, um, that refined sugar was so bad. And, and so reading that book really had a, um, it was easy to read that book and keep away from the candy, you know, and um, uh, I, I think the other thing that that uh, had a huge effect on me thinking wise in terms of getting determination to 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 eat this way was um, I had heard a, a episode of uh, Rogan and Rhonda Patrick was on there and she was talking about how um, she was really, uh, it was an episode about intermittent fasting and she was saying, look, you know, we're not designed to eat, to graze 16 hours a day. Our DNA, because this, our diet has only changed in the last hundred years and it's never changed that drastically in all hundred thousand years of humanoids. We've never had this huge, drastic, remarkable and very bad change and our DNA has yet to adapt to the way that we're eating now which is why you see more obesity, more heart disease, more diabetes, all the bad stuff is coming from that. And so the, the way she explained it was that, you know, when you're a caveman or you're a post ice age man and you're running around looking for something to eat, you um, may get a kill only three days, only every three days. So you eat all that meat, you eat as much as you can, you stuff yourself. And then if you have to have something to get you to the next kill, then you go into gatherer mode which means, you know, like uh, plants or anything that berries that you would pick up, that would just hold you over until the next kill. And that's how we're designed to eat, you know, with these long uh, fasting periods, you know, that's just how our DNA is. There's where, that's where, how we're constructed. And the more closely that you can eat that way, the way that we're designed is that, that then I think you're going to be better off. The other thing she said was, and I think this is important, is that, um, and this is, the, this is the part that kind of scared me in a way, not, not scared, but really made me a, a alert to what I was doing. And she talked about how, you know, once you put the first morsel of food in your mouth that day, that has to become, that your body has to make bioavailable, whether it just be one bite of a sandwich or half a bear claw or whatever it is, all of those systems that are in your body, they turn on and they're on a timer. And once they turn off, which is generally about eight to 10 hours later, so you put the food in, your whole body says, all right, let's go. Let's digest this food. Let's start going. We only have eight to 10 hours. And right. when you put food in after that feeding window, your body goes, what the hell is this? And then it right. actually just ends up storing it as fat if it doesn't eliminate it. So you, you get, um, so that made me kind of, you know, freak out a little bit because I know that that those systems the endocrine system the metabolic system they can't just run 24 7. they can't run 16 hours you know they just can't and when you damage them by putting food in outside of their timer it's all bad it's all bad for you it, uh, there's no good that can come from it and so that was the one thing that really um made me a a, a true believer in intermittent fasting before i started getting serious about keto and and carnivore right no intermittent fasting is definitely a, a, a part of my my regimen and, and and it seems like it's it's gaining state steam across the the world because more and more people are, are actively uh talking about it that they're doing the you know a 16 uh eight window mm -hmm. uh, though in that eight hour window it's just amazing to me that for so long, 
the medical profession and, and the advice that you gave that they've been given is, you know, breakfast, the most important meal. And oh. then you snack, snack every couple hours. And, yeah. you know, and, and then the old adage is, well, you're just not supposed to eat uh, late at night. Late at, if you eat after six, that's really bad for you. But the reality of it is what you just said, it doesn't matter when you eat. It's that eight hours that you have to eat within. Um, you could eat at midnight, midnight, as long as that's it. If you eat at right. midnight till 6 a.m., and you're, you're fine. Your body's fine. Your body will process that while you're sleeping. It's just that if you go past that, like you said, it starts storing it up as fat. And then there's a whole lot of other issues or, or uh, stress that's placed on your organs and your body. Right. Because and, your, your systems are trying to restart because you fold them. You said, okay, we're finished. And then they're shutting down and doing whatever they're right, doing. Right, go to sleep. Yeah. Yes. And, and then you throw a burger in there at, you know, 1030 at night, your, your system is just like freaking out, you know? And so, um, so I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm, too, I'm too sleepy to process. Just go store that over there and uh, right. we'll deal with that later. Right. On your belly. We'll put it right on your belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's awesome. So when, when did you actually start the, uh, the I mean, I know you're not, full-blown carnivore but when did you start the uh, the meat eating when how, how long ago was that um it was second week in january this year is when i ate my first meat and um i have a picture of me taking the first bite but i think it was like the second or third week in january right around there it was right around when i got the um whenever i got the traeger and so it was uh that made me want to cook meat and want to, you know, try it out and, and eat some meat. But it was, uh, it, th that was the first time. And it was, like I said, I was very surprised that I didn't have any, any side effects. I fully expected, you know, spend a couple of days on the thunder bucket, like I said, and, <laughs> and, you know, get, just get my body used to changing over, but there was no ill effects, none whatsoever. Thank goodness. Um, well, and, well, well, what was your taste bud's response to actually putting filet mignon in your, your mouth after 16 years of not having any it was, meat? What was your response a, to it? That's a really good question. Um, I felt like, so the, the reason I didn't eat meat is because it kind of grossed me out because I had gotten so sick from it. And I never really, you know, I probably could have overcome that feeling a long time ago if I wanted to like work on it with my psychiatrist or whatever. But right. But that was the that was my main issue, and so that was always my crutch. You know, it grosses me out. I don't, you know, it made me sick one time, three times, really bad. And then um, when I did eventually put it in my mouth, I think I got about halfway through the fillet, and I, of course, it was good, but I, I all of a sudden had this um, flashback. No, I had a realization that you know that just that aha moment that this feels like the way it should be you know where you can't put your finger on it but you're eating this thing and it's not a chocolate bar it's a something that is going to make you healthy and you eat it and you're like oh this is you know you have that sort of a primal upwelling where you're like yeah this is the way it's supposed to go man you know so i definitely had that that primal moment and um, and, and felt that the, the next couple of times, because it was still new for me for a week or so. And, you know, trying hamburgers and strip steaks and, you know, all the different things that we did that week. And, um, and I was just like, I was raring to go. I was like, you know, let's get a porterhouse steak or whatever, just anything, because I, I had gotten that feeling. And I think that's just something that's just so p far back there in the pea sized part of your brain that you, you can't really put your finger on it. It's just an instinct that you have to eat meat. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. I absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing inside because I keep picturing the tomahawk and I know Brian loves getting the tomahawk. Oh yeah. And I keep going back to the Flintstones where they have those, those cartoons of those brontosaurus burgers. So they're nothing but the bones. On right. The, on the, and they just throw it on the side of the car. Yeah. And the car yeah. Over yeah. yeah. On the side of the car. Right. Love that. And, uh, and, and, you know, and it's so funny because I keep thinking back to what you just said. And I remember as a child watching those cartoons, just seeing the bones, I was craving to have that bone. Yes. That, that brontosaurus burger or whatever they were having. And it's mm -hmm. a, and then, you know, you get the tomahawk, which gives you 
face of the, Flint, the Flintstones bone sticking out and that big hunk of yeah. meat. And, uh, and I agree with you. It, it, it feels right. I can't, I mm -hmm. can't explain it. I could tell you why, but there's a, like you said, there's this, that, that caveman that's inside it, of you. Yeah. This is what on it. It's like instinct, you know, I'll yeah, tell you. I was going to say I had the exact same experience. And, you know, you referred to that, that, that festival. That wasn't the first time I ate meat. It's the first time I saw you eat meat. Yeah, yeah. Which was, which was weird. So but that, that was my point. It was like this bizarre. So, Brian, what was the first time? So, Brian, share your, your first time experience of going back to meat. Well, I went and bought this big juicy ribeye, and it was about that thick, and, uh, and some bacon. And I made it. I had to wait till my my girlfriend at the time wasn't home so i made this big juicy steak and i remember taking a picture of it and sent it to my brother-in-law because because he was always grilling steaks when i go because i stay with him and my sister and and before i ate meat you know i'd always watch him grill his steaks and stuff so i sent him this photo of it but i had that the exact same experience as mark had i uh i ate it and it was almost like ah uh, like this, yeah, it was like, this is what's been missing. And like, I, it, it tasted so good and I hadn't had it in so long. It was like, what was I thinking? Why was I not doing this? And then, and then within that first week or two, I, I just remember my energy level just was boosted. My workouts, I, I, I could lift more weights and, and all of a sudden, you know, I could see just a whole change in my, my physical body from, from the meat. It, it was amazing. It was like the clouds parted. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you a problem that I ran into um, recently that, um, you know, Brian and I would talk about how much we're eating and, um, and the, the fact that you could pretty much just stuff yourself with, with a gigantic piece of meat um, to know with no penalty. And so right. I was having some issues about, I don't know, maybe three months ago where maybe two months ago where I, I all of a sudden wasn't losing any weight and I could probably lose about 10 more pounds. And I finally figured out what I was doing wrong and it was a simple calorie count. So I was eating, um, you know, like I would eat an entire 10 ounce New York strip steak, um, bacon, cheese, um, any, anything else I could get my hands on that was carnivore and absolutely stuffing myself. So I was probably throwing back 4,000 calories a day, including eggs and, um, you know, cheese in the eggs, bacon with the eggs, bacon with the steak, you know, and I think it was the, the uh, you know, I'm not a big guy, I'm, I'm 5'10", but I'm, I'm usually pretty thin. And um, I, I, and I figured out, so once I cut the calories back and I cut the portioning back, then I started to lose weight again. And now I'm back on a downward trajectory to where my weight should be. I should be about 148 to 150. So, um, but it's going, it's going back down the way it should be. And I feel better because, you know, honestly, I was stuffing my freaking face for sure. And I would lay there on the couch, go, Oh my God, that was so good. If only I could fit another half of a New York strip in there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so I did have an issue with the calorie count and, and I don't, I, I, since I have been watching the calories, um, it has, uh, it has changed and I've gone back down to a, a downward trajectory in weight loss. And I don't need to lose weight, but I would prefer to be um, at what I feel is my natural weight, right around 148, 150, somewhere in there. That's where I prefer to be. That's how much I weighed in high school. So, and I'm not far from that right now. I need about you know, about 10, 11 more pounds, but um, I had gotten up to, um, I had gotten all the way up to 169. And I was like, oh man, something's really wrong. Brian, I think maybe you remember me texting you about it one time. Um, yeah, I vaguely remember that. I was like, yeah, I'm not really losing weight. And then I just did some research and I was like, and then I counted calories one time and I had like a 5,000 calorie meal, you know, and I was like, holy crap, that's like Arctic living, you know, <laughs> I've never had lover. That. You know what I mean? You turn around and go, hey, Brian, does my base look big? And, uh... <laughs> well, I need to get a special cutout for the belly, you know, if it gets any bigger. So, um, I mean, it's, it's fine now. I think, uh, that, I think that I solved that problem, but 
that was a, um, um, that was something that, you know, cause it looks to me like Brian can eat as much as he want and stuff his face and he doesn't appear, appear to, you know, we both work out, you know, I do jujitsu and Brian lifts weights and stuff. And we're, we're both pretty fit guys. And, um, I would say that, that, uh, you know, I was like, man, why am I, why am I actually getting bigger? You know, this doesn't make any sense. And then one, like I said, once I figured out the calorie count thing, you know, I cut my portions down to reasonable size. Instead of eating, you know, five eggs, I eat two, you know? <laughs> so, and then instead of half a block of cheese, I just eat a couple slices, you know? Half a block. <laughs> I don't know. It was it seemed good at the time and I wasn't full yet. So I figured I could just keep stuffing it, you know? So, and I was doing that a lot and I was like, wow, this is kind of weird. I feel really good, but I'm, I'm, I'm gaining weight where I shouldn't be gaining weight here. But like I said, I figured it out. And that was really the only, um, the only issue that I've ever had with, you know, keto slash carnivore was that, you know, making the mistake to realize that I'm a bit of a smaller, um, thinner man and that I don't really need, you know, four or 5,000 calories when I'm not dog sledding, you know what I mean? Right. So, um, so I figured that out and that was, a, that was a good thing to know. And if anybody out there is listening and they feel like they're, you know, pigging out and not losing weight, then, you know, I would advise you to check your calorie count and just sort of get a, just sort of get a new bead on where you're at with what you're eating, you know? Well, you know what I found was, um, you know, sometimes I can stuff myself like thinking that I've really overdone it and, and I'll get up the next day and I'll weigh myself and I'll be like four ounces lighter than I was the day before, oh, you know, God. after stuffing myself. Mm -hmm. But then other times I, 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 I do fluctuate, you know, I'll go up and down. Um, but uh, for me, the dairy will do that to me. It'll, it'll kind of oh. bloat me a little bit and it's more like uh, water retention or something. Cause mm -hmm. I noticed like, my aura ring, I'll go to take it off and I'm like, ah. Take it off. <laughs> That's a big key when you can't get any of your rings off that you wear all the time. You're like, what's going on here? Right, right. So, so that, that, that's what I discovered. Certain foods will, will trigger that. Mm -hmm. um, so usually when that, something like that happens, I'll cut back on like the cheese. I'll skip a few days of cheese and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Or what was the other thing? You, you mentioned something I, I was going to say. Um, Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You you cut down on your your portions and stuff. Usually, when I'm doing like during the week, if I'm doing like a really heavy lifting day and working out, like doing a really strenuous workout, I'll, I don't even care. I'll just eat. That's when I eat the like the the big uh, tomahawk steaks and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, that last tomahawk steak was three, over three pounds. I almost finished it. I I was trying to, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll eat like that on, on the heavy days. And then, and then uh, if I have a rest day, you know, where I'll, I'll maybe do something light, like just go for a run or a walk, uh, I'll, I'll drop it back down to like the salmon, you know, like the fish and, and mm -hmm. something a little lighter than the meat. But, but that's all I do. Other than that, I don't even, I, I should probably count the calories just, just out of curiosity. Just, just to see. Unfortunately, um, I can't do fish as Brian knows I'm allergic to seafood. So yeah. that's not part of my diet. Unfortunately, I know that um, um, it's nice to have options. So I opt for pork or turkey or chicken occasionally, yeah. but I've fallen in love with beef so great. It's like, yeah, I don't really want chicken. That's not as good. You know? Yeah. You might as well eat what you love, you know? I know. Yeah, I know. As long as it's yeah. not sugar. <laughs> as long as it's not sugar. No sugar. Yeah. So, so what's your, what's your favorite meal? What's your favorite food then? If you could pick, if you only could choose one meal, what would that meal be? Well, I had uh, a favorite meal of mine last night. I had um, uh, half of a 10 ounce New York strip. I cooked the whole thing and then I saved the rest of it for tonight. Um, and then I had uh, um, three eggs with um, some shredded cheese and I had um, uh, mushrooms that were broiled in butter on the on the grill. I cooked them. At, I usually cook them at the same time the steak. But I've always been a, a a mushroom guy. I've always loved mushrooms, and they're you know, I, I like them better than broccoli. So uh, I'll I'll go for mushrooms every time. So that's a, and I like the taste of the mushrooms. That you know how sometimes you try to get a combo on your fork and put it in there just right, and then shove it in your mouth real quick. So I do that with steak and mushrooms. That's that's my favorite. And then I try to get um, 
I try to pick a rub that doesn't have any sugar in it or, or any of the weird stuff that, that Brian's been, been telling me about that a lot of the rubs have. And, um, and I get, uh, and then I'll smoke it for, um, you know, a half hour and then I'll pull the meat off and rest it in a Yeti and then fire the grill up to 450 or 500 and then just throw everything back on there for seven minutes or so and get a, get a medium to medium rare is about yeah. where I like it. So. You, you um, cook but, it exactly. That's exactly how I cook it on my Traeger. I get better yeah. fact, if I, I got ribeyes that are this thick oh, um, yeah. that, that tomorrow I've, I, I've decided I, I was going to sous vide, but I think the, typically what I do, Mark, is what you just said. I'll, I'll just put it on smoke and let it smoke for 30 minutes on the, on the Traeger. Then I'll mm -hmm. pull it off, crank it up high, and then I'll pull them back on for about two and a half minutes on both sides, or I'll put the thermometer in. And when they get, you know, I like a medium rare, so I want to definitely mm -hmm. Have them eat and then pull those off and gosh they they are delicious yeah, yeah that's, that's the way i've been doing it. I, I changed over too i was doing the sous vide but now i i just stick the 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 probe in there and smoke it at 225 until the internal temperature gets like 120 and that's when i pull it off and then crank the grill and just throw it back on for like three minutes a side or so it would i don't know if you can see that i haven't posted this yet tonight uh, oh so that looks yummy piece of butter bread. on there yeah Oh, nice. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. by the way, Brian, I, I, uh, I met with a, a farmer yesterday, last night, actually, and I, I got another half a cow coming. So uh, uh, I got to get a freezer. I'm so, that's, I'm so that's, frustrated that's, that's, that I can't find a freezer anywhere. <laughs> well, that, that's my, that's now my dilemma right now. Now I got to find a freezer. <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> so that's, that's 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 the problem so anybody who's watching this you got a freezer for sale in virginia dc maryland give me a call i'll be more than happy to come pick it up <laughs> or nashville I, I need one really bad. i need one in nashville i have a small freezer outside so i'm okay with uh not i don't i'm not buying a half a cow though so well that's my my ultimate plan so i want to make sure i have a freezer that can hey brian you want like, you want you find i'll, I'll get the I'll, you buy the other half of the cow so the whole cow won't go to waste you get the other half and uh and then we just got to find freezers. That's that's the missing link in this whole equation. Well, how long does it take to get the cow? Um, yeah, that's cow, a good question. Well, the cow goes to they'll they'll let me know that I mean it's grazing right now. It, it's it'll be going to uh, the meat plant uh, probably in September, late September, early October. They said somewhere is in there is when. Hmm, I wonder if freezers will be available again. There's well. The one, the closest delivery date I could get was October 26th. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh man. You, couldn't, you guys couldn't find anything on Craigslist or eBay? Or I've been searching uh, Facebook Marketplace. Every once in a while, one will turn up on Facebook Marketplace, but most of them are small. Yeah. But, but a few, couple big ones, and then they'll have the several photos and they'll have one with the lid open and it'll be all scummy inside. And I'm like, oh. ah, I don't want that. Uh, I'd rather have a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the thing you want because the used one I just got, the one I got delivered that was used, it stopped working. So it, oh, it, no. the other guy came back and picked up his, uh, his meat and, and, and refunded my money. So I'm appreciative of that. I, oh, that was nice of him. It was nice of him. But if, you know, I showed on one of the videos, we had New York strip steak. There was like 1.5 ounces. It's 1.5 ounces. They were, in vacuum packs that was my new york strip steak size i'm like you gotta be kidding me i, I can't eat one <laughs> oh, i remember I that <laughs> yeah you remember that brian it was yeah. this big it was like little individual bites <laughs> Bite size. Yeah. it's like you know it's like one piece he used to dip into a fondue pot to have and and, <laughs> and that's the kind of meat he was serving up i'm like no this has got to go back i'm not taking this wow so, anyway so we well, guys are out on the road so have you noticed mark your your energy i mean you're an active person anyway but it have, did you notice your energy level going up or what was some of the benefits going keto did you experience yeah i think that um you know definitely uh when i would get to work i wouldn't be tired when i got there you know from the commute that i had at the time and um um i'm not tired when i wake up you know some people are like oh my god i need to have my coffee and i'm just not like that i wake up and i'm i'm a i'm I'm cognizant, I'm aware, I'm, I'm ready for the next thing. And um, uh, uh, it's, it really uh, made a difference in my sleep and I'm able to fall asleep faster and sleep longer. 
Um, different people, I'm sure, will report different things, but um, uh, that, that's been my experience. And I've, I definitely felt like um, there have been times where like Brian or I were not able to really eat something reasonable before the gig. And I'm able to go up there and do the show and do an hour and a half and not, and, and not suffer and not be tired or, or, or losing my marbles a little bit from not eating, you know? And so, so it has left me with the ability to keep, uh, um, to keep pushing through. Well, I don't even really have to push. It's just not, that eating is not, uh, you know, like, like we were talking earlier, it doesn't come up and, and start punching you in the gut going, you got to eat something, get a cookie, get a cookie. So it does. So it, it, it really alleviated me from, you know, uh, like we said, like you always think about the next food, you know, when can I get some Triscuits or some, you know, blah, 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 any, anything. And I don't think that way anymore. And I know, that if I get to a gig and there's nothing good there that Brian and I can go find something later, but, or we just think if the gig is like sort of sketchy, we'll grab something larger in the afternoon. And then sometimes we'll get there and there'll be awesome food there. And it'll be like, dang, we shouldn't have eaten earlier, you know? Or, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it's kind of a flip of the coin, but we try to, um, you know, we try to keep, keep, a, um, a, you know, a time set aside that works in both his window and my window and and where we can go late afternoon like two o'clock and get something to eat and still have energy to burn at 9 30 when we go on stage so now, so now that we're, we're, that's a huge difference for me because i didn't experience that before right yeah i mean people just people who are still eating sugar you're going to be hearing this and you're going to just go this, I just never could do that. And you're right. As long as you keep eating sugar, you're never going to be able to, to do exactly what you hear Mark, Brian, and myself doing. Right. But if you can just divorce yourself from sugar or, or food that's going to turn into sugar for you, you'll be amazed at how, how perfect your body is to, uh, to, to want to keep you alive and, 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 and have you energy field and, and have you focus on other things other than just being addicted to sugar. Where am I going to get my next sugar high? Mm -hmm. uh, so let me ask you a question. Since so we know how you two eat, who's the worst eater out of your band? Uh, who's the one that eats anything they want? Man, I hate to put him on the spot, but Ron, yeah. Ronnie is the, uh, he is the, uh, anti-keto he's the kryptonite he no, no you know he he's doesn't a, he, he's a convenience store shopper the convenience store guy <laughs> well, he goes to 7-eleven and just picks up stuff that's right, that's right. and you know gardetto's chips and and a couple of monsters and you know once in a while he might grab a couple of hard-boiled eggs off the shelf there but you know mostly he'll get you know a sandwich or two one for later um, just in case, again, like the club doesn't have any reasonable food, but, um, uh, you know, and, and, and he is, he's by far the worst, but he, you know, he looks all right. I mean, he's, you know, he's still skinny, um, but, but for sure he will grab just about anything, you know, burritos, um, you know, he's that guy in the convenience store that walks up with the handful of crap and puts it on the counter and there's, there might be some Skittles in there, you know, all kinds of weird all kinds of weird stuff. I'm having flashbacks because I just remember my early years of going out of Virginia Beach and or Ocean City, whichever it was for our spring break, summer breaks, and 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 being that person who walked into 7-Eleven and picked up all the microwave food and my big gulp of 64 ounces of Mountain oh, Dew. Of sugar and just, water. I, I, yeah, sugar. And I think back to, I mean, as you guys, as you're pitching that story, I'm picturing it. And I'm actually getting sick. Like, I just like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe yeah. I just that poison in my body and I was happy to do it and oh, I would do it every so two happy. hours. So happy to do it. I'm with you on that. It was, th th those were glorious times, but they are no more for me. <laughs> no, there's not. Hey, Brian, you had something else to say in regards to Ronnie. What you have to share? Oh, I was going to say, I don't know, Mark, I don't know if you know, Ronnie's planning on coming and staying with me for a while. Yeah, I do know that. And yeah, so, so, so I have to e educate him on his diet. <laughs> I'll get him eaten right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so he will change, and he will feel better too, because you know he says he feels pretty good right now. But, 
um, changing his diet will be the best thing, the second best thing that can happen to him, you know, so. Yeah. So that'll be yeah. good. You're going to have to frisk him before he comes to the front door, Brian, and make sure he's not bringing like Yoo-Hoo or, or uh, Little Debbie's or wow. microwave burritos or anything. <laughs> he'll, ha he'll have his designated cabinet in my kitchen where he can keep his <laughs> stuff. And Brian can just go through and throw out the cupcakes when Bron Ronnie's not around, and Ronnie might forget they're there. God, I thought I had cupcakes in here. What happened to those things? You know. Well, 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 that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Mark. If there's one thing that you'd want to share with people who are just who are watching this for the first time and hearing your story, what would you say to them if they haven't gone keto carnivore? What would what suggestion or, or advice would you give them? I think that um, in 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 my experience you know, this is, um, you could sort of put it out there that this is a, this is a diet because it's a way of eating. And so by definition, a diet is a way of eating and diet has a bad connotation to it. So people are like, Oh, I'm on the Atkins diet. I'm on this diet. I'm on that diet. And, and this, this carnivore keto thing is a way of eating, but it is not a diet. It is a lifestyle. And, and once you come to grips with that, and the other thing that happens is you may not see any, you, you may not see any real benefit um, until a month goes by. Like I've heard uh, a friend, uh, somebody I know just went, uh, started keto two weeks ago and they've already lost 12 pounds, but could be a lot of water weight. They could run into a wall. And so what I would like to say to people is that, you know, it's it, it, once you decide to do something, like keto or carnivore, decide to do it. And then just, that's it, that you've made a decision. There's no going back, um, you know, unless you have some kind of underlying health issue that prevents you from not eating Snickers bars and M&Ms. So, um, or that forces you to eat Snickers bars and M&Ms. So, so I think that the, that's the most important thing to remember for people is like, is like, it doesn't happen right away. There are lots of little things that happen along your journey that add up to big revelations and that you should um once you decide to do it make sure that you have the mental fortitude to stick with it and it helps to throw out all the crap in your pantry before you get started yeah. so you won't be tempted to go get cheetos at midnight when you run downstairs or you know take a big spoonful of peanut butter which is something yeah, i used yeah. to like to do quite that's, a bit oh, that's, that 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 is one of my guilty pleasures right there <laughs> that's so <laughs> awesome and, e so, and even and even now, every now and then, I'll pick it up because I just I just I'll get a big spoon and I but I could go through a whole jar. That's definitely uh, one of my guilty pleasures back in the day. Yeah, for sure. So, but but yeah, I would say that you know you you really have to make up your mind that you're going to do this. You, you're going to have to shop differently. Um, you're going to have to be um, um, cognizant of what you're putting in your body. Um, and you have to practice it every day because you'll, um, you'll forget, you know, you'll be like, oh man, I just had, uh, you know, a, um, a, a tortilla in a wrap. And it's like, that's not really, that's not keto or carnivore. It's, it is low carb, but right. it's bad. And so you have to be, um, you have to take a little bit of time and educate yourself on what those no-no foods are that right. um, if you're doing keto, you really have to be a little bit more careful because carnivore it's only animal products. And so that's easy. Easy. Yeah. Nothing, nothing on carnivore comes in a plastic bag that you can pop open. Right. So, so that's that's a little, pork rinds. Easier. Yeah. Or pork, oh. well, pork rinds, right. The lone exception. Right. <laughs> so, so that would be my message to people is just like, you know, have the wherewithal to commit and then trust yourself and trust the science because the science is the thing that drives me to live this lifestyle and um you know granted i get to share it with brian a lot and, and and we enjoy each other's companies and our stories and what we're cooking and how we're cooking and that's a that's a nice part of it so i have like sort of a you know a, a, a partner who who i can bounce things off of you know and it helps to have you know a lot of people join the keto groups on facebook they join the carnivore groups on facebook i feel like those can be tremendously helpful um, if you have trouble uh, getting information in other ways, if you're, you know, if you're on your phone, it's really easy to jump into a group and ask a question rather than start Googling stuff on your laptop. So I, I think that, you know, having the wherewithal to commit and understand 
also that this is not a two week turnaround. And then right. also after, say your goal is to lose weight and feel better. After you lose that weight and feel better, you can't just start going to get pizza again. It That's doesn't right. work like that. This is a, yeah, it's, not are, temporary. Yeah. it's not temporary. You're resetting your body to the way that our DNA is designed to consume food. And that's Correct. what you're doing. And it can only benefit you in the long run. It reduces inflammation. As we know, inflammation is the cause of all disease. And so if you're living a lifestyle that is reducing inflammation, you can't just, you know, take a couple month break or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can't bounce back and forth. Once you decide to do it, you just, you just have to, um, you know, have the mental fortitude to say, that's it. I'm not doing anything else but this. And then, you know, maybe after three weeks, you'll see some benefit, but three weeks is a long time when you're eating weird stuff that you're not used to, you know, and right. lear learning how to prepare the food and what to buy, how to shop. Um, and so you have to, you have to really stick with it. And it always helps to have somebody to bounce things off of. Yeah. You know, I, I, I took, go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say when, whenever I'm talking to somebody that's interested, but they're not sure if they're, if it, if it's for them or, or they don't know if it'll work for them. Uh, my advice is always to try it for 30 days and see, see how you feel at the end of the 30 days. And if it's working, just keeps extending it, you know? And usually what happens is they, they get used to doing it like that. And then they, it's not hard anymore. You know, it just seems overwhelming. I think for a lot of people at first, it's like, well, wow, how do you do that? I don't know how you would do that, <laughs> but it's well, easy and natural, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, well, stripping it down a carnivore to the, that's like the basics and it's so easy. I mean, I don't, you don't have to think about it when you go buy meat. It's not right. like you don't have to pick up a piece of meat and look at the ingredients. <laughs> it's not breaded steak, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, anytime you buy like, like preformed patties or any of that, you, you have to make sure they didn't add stuff to it because oh, they will. Right. Oil the meat or seed too. Seed oils, yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. So I always make sure I just buy the, I make it everything myself. Like if I'm gonna, if I want burgers, I just buy a big lump of, of ground beef and make burgers. Yep. But, uh, Same here. Mm -hmm. But going back to you, you're talking about keto or carnivore. Uh, Doctor Barry calls it the proper human diet. So that's that's what I ah, would do it as. It is the proper human diet. It's what we're supposed to eat. I mean, yeah. and he makes that that cool analogy of of you know if you, if you fed your dog a vegan diet, it would die. Mm -hmm. It's like eventually anyway, but, uh, you know, so why would you feed yourself that? Cause we're basically, you know, built like dogs as far as our digest, de yeah. digestion. Yeah. <laughs> or like, well, you know, the thing that, you know, the, you said something Mark that I think people really need to, to, to do. And, and one thing I would say is you definitely need to educate yourself and you also have to be honest with yourself because one of the things that, that I hear people say a lot, they go, oh, I tried keto, I just, it didn't work for me. I go, well, tell me how you did it. And they really never went keto. And that's the problem when I, and they, and they spread that misnomer, that myth that keto didn't work for them when the reality of it is they were never keto in the first place. Oh yeah. They, you know, they go out and buy, because they've been brainwashed that the other diets really work, the, the low fat. So they go, oh no, no, I can, I've heard them say, oh, I've cut off all my fats, I just eat yogurt. And, uh, but the keto did, and I'm like, no, 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 you can't have yogurt. Yogurt's not on the, you can have Greek yogurt, Greek right. yogurt. That's, but you got a hard, it's even hard to find the Greek yogurt that you can have in Australia. Right. Which is it sure of, is. Yeah. Cause, uh, I, you know, we keep, we keep Greek yogurt in our refrigerator, but to go find it, it's hard to find Greek right yogurt, hundred percent fat. Almost any yogurt you pick, go to the, the thousand rows they have, it's going to say non-fat, 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 non-fat. Right. Non -fat. And, you know, the people who say they go keto, they go, yeah, I had non-fat yogurt. And you're like, then you're not keto. You're, you're, and they, it, it, people don't seem to understand that. And then they also have, well, you know, they still eat fruits. They think fruits are okay because fruits have been programmed into them mm -hmm. that it's okay to have fruits. Mm -hmm. And like, no, fruits have been genetically modified to the point is, as Brian calls them, that they're, they're, they're sugar bombs. They're, they're yeah. sugar bombs. Yeah. And the food that goes back to being in the wild that grows in the wild that we can eat the nuts and berries and stuff they're tr they are way smaller and way nutrient dense than the food that you have on you know at a at a at a, at a, at a Walmart grocery store or a food line or Kroger's or um, 
you know, they've been genetically modified and they're much more sweeter, probably a hundred times sweeter than they were in the wild. Yeah. A hundred so, years ago. Yeah. 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 So, you know, when you go back to, when you go back to eating that one ingredient food, that steak, that, that hamburger, that ribeye, um, there is something primitive in you that your body goes, yes, this is strict. It says nothing else, but what I, what I desire to have to feed my cells. And so, um, when you do make that switch and you truly do get off the sugar train, uh, I, I think you'll start to think clearer. I think you'll notice a noticeable difference if you stick to it for at least 30 days. I concur. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm much better at constructing a sentence these days. <laughs> I, used be, I used to be horrible. <laughs> I'd say it backwards and I couldn't figure out like, wow, there's a word I'm trying to think of. But now it's just like the sentences flow out of my mouth so much easier. <laughs> Yeah. And so, I mean, do you contribute that just to the fact that your synopsis are firing because you're given the fuel that your, your brain and, and your body needs? Oh yeah. Yeah. My, the mental clarity part of it was like, you know, very obvious to me when, when especially uh, when I kicked in the fasting part of it. Same here. Very apparent. No, yeah. no question. Yeah. Well, yeah. Super awesome. focused. Well, listen, Mark, it's come that time. We want to thank you for you giving up your time and, and sure. joining us this evening and, and sharing your story and, and giving great advice to help people who, uh, who are thinking about switching over. And, and you're absolutely right. Brian has talked about this many times. And, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, it's a lifestyle. So be ready to change your lifestyle. And if you want to be able to put yourself in the best possible position, build your immune system, support your immune system, build your immune system up where you're not afraid of catching a cold or anything, but you have the fuel to be able to fight what's out there. You know, seriously consider um, looking at keto or carnivore and do your education. Go to like uh, dietdoctor.com or go to nutrition and really plan out. Mark gave you great advice. Plan out, you know, whatever you've been eating plan out your next week or two, go to the store, buy what you're going to need and get rid of all the stuff that's going to tempt you. That's in your kitchen. Just get rid of it. Yeah. Best just advice. Get rid of it. Yeah. Just get rid of it. So anyway, that's all we got for this week's episode. So thank you guys, Brian, Thanks you got any party me. words you want to share? No, it was great to have Mark on though. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, uh, it's great to be fun. here. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, it's great. We'll get Ronnie on after uh, he's, He's eating meat too. Uh -huh. and, uh, a month in, that would be great. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that, that, that would be, that'd be awesome. So anyway, well, Mark, thanks again. You guys have a great week. You guys at home, stay healthy, stay safe and stay out of the hospital. And we'll see you guys again next Friday at seven o'clock until then. See ya. See you later. <laughs>